Hi everyone. Today I'd like to give you a little rundown on the power system I installed in my RV. I did this about a year ago and we've been using it steady since. Um, I think I've got enough time into it to talk about it. First of all I want to show you all the different components I've put in. This is our generator. It's a Champion 3400 watt dual fuel inverter style generator. When I mounted it I put the controls back here to protect them a little bit going down the road. That way if a rock or something happens to kick up, it's not going to hit it. I do also keep it covered going down the road. I mounted it on a uh, Stromberg Carlson trailer tray. Worked out really nice. Was some room that I wasn't using and it's mounted very solid. What I did to mount it to it, if you look up underneath here, there's a bolt here and a bolt here. I took the bolts out of the feet on the generator, bought longer bolts and put them up through. And on the back side, these are U-bolts that go up around the axle. And then they're bolted down, used Loctite and everything so nothing can vibrate loose. Now I hooked the generator up directly to the trailer's power or uh, propane system. I got a quick connect plug right there. I plug right into my grill port underneath the camper. It runs up and goes to a quick connect on the back of the generator. And that works out really good for me. Eventually, I do want to plumb it directly in to the propane tanks on the tongue. That way I don't have to have the long cord hanging down and I can let it semi-permanent hooked up. Another thing I'd like to add to the generator eventually is a uh, automatic disconnect switch. Right now I have to pull my power cord from around the side of the trailer, bring it up and plug it into the generator. It's no real big deal, but I can cut a hole right here and access my power directly inside and put a remote disconnect switch in there. Something else I have is a 100 watt Renergy suitcase solar panel. On it, I did upgrade the cord that came with it. I went to a 10 gauge cord so I could lengthen it out just a little bit. I went all right around 25 feet long. That way I can move it around during the day and get the best sun. It came with a uh, waterproof charge controller already mounted to it and I don't know if you can see that but right now it's making 6.4 amps in good sun will average right around seven and a half amps with it then on this sliding tray right here I mounted it inside the compartment I have four Windy Nation 100 amp hour AGM batteries and as we come up through, this is my fuse for the, it's a 300 amp fuse for the power supply going to the inverter. This disconnect switch right here disconnects the 12 volt going to the inverter. This disconnect switch disconnects the 12 volt going to the camper. These two wires right here, one of them brings AC into the inverter and one takes AC power back out to the rest of the camper. The one that brings AC in runs all the way around the camper up to the side and hooks to the back of the plug where we plug into shore power. The other one runs right along with it, comes up underneath my refrigerator and hooks into my breaker box where the wire from the shore power plug used to hook. So everything runs through my GoPower IC2000 inverter. I like it hooked up that way if we're in a campground it has a low voltage situation this inverter will sense it and supplement my voltage with battery power so I never even know it and it's great protection I've also added this shunt right here that's for my Victron battery monitor I really like the Victron monitor because it uh, has an app you can put on your smartphone and monitor your batteries from your smartphone. 
makes it really convenient. If you have any questions about my setup or I missed anything, something I just noticed right here, I used the factory Furion solar charge plug already in the side of the camper. It seemed a really convenient way for me to hook up my solar panel. The only thing I didn't like about it, the wires on the inside were very small gauge. I upgraded them to 10 gauge wire. That way it uh, helps and I added a fuse right inside. If you have any questions about it, please uh, leave your questions in the comment below. And I'll try to answer any questions you might have. You know, we do live full time in our travel trailer. And we do a lot of boondocking, so our power system is important to us. With the setup I have right here with the 400 amp hour AGM batteries, we can run pretty much two days straight through off nothing but battery with the solar. If we didn't have the solar, we'd probably only get about a day out of it. You know, our normal draw is about 13 amps. And me and my wife both work full time on the computers, so we have our cell phone booster running, our Wi Fi Ranger, the computers. Um, we make coffee, we run the microwave. The only thing we don't run off the batteries is the AC. When uh, we do need some AC, we fire up the uh, champion generator and it does a great job with our AC unit. When we are boondocking and running off this system, our batteries give us a good full two, two days of running. Then that evening I'll fire the generator up for about an hour and a half and it'll bring the batteries right back up to full charge. You know, one thing I would like to have is a little more solar power. If I had about another 300 watts of solar, I think as long as we had good sun, we could pretty much run 90% of the time without firing the generator up. Now, we try to be a little careful about the amount of power we use, but we don't hurt ourselves. You know, the coffee pot and the microwave, if we want to run them, we fire them up and don't worry about it. I'm very happy with the way this system performs. You know, I think it's uh, a good start for somebody who wants to do a lot of boondocking. It takes care of us. I really like the dual fuel generator. Having the ability to run it off propane, I don't have to drag gasoline around with me. One little disadvantage you do have with the propane, they don't make quite as much power on propane. It's only about 3,100 watts. So starting the AC at higher elevations on propane can be a little bit of a challenge. For that, I do keep a full tank of gasoline in it, and it starts it right up on gasoline, no problem. You know, all in all, very happy with the setup. It's done a good job for us. And with a few little minor tweaks, I think I'll have it right where I need it. Like I've said a couple times when I thought I was almost finished, um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. And I'll do my best to answer them all for you or direct you to the right place to get them answered. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons if you like what you see. Thank you very much and have a great day.